So, Star Fox Adventures is a game that holds a lot of nostalgia for me. I came to terms a long time ago with the fact that in many ways it is an objectively bad game. But I don't think I realised until playing it through on stream with my critical eye how bad it was. The combat is boring and repetitive. The controls are mediocre at best and have always been overly sensitive on the control stick. The fact that there is only one action button has always been a sticking point for me as it's even less than the usual three that you get in games like Zelda and often even that isn't enough. The issue is partially solved by the fact that the menu is so intuitive and doesn't interrupt gameplay and the fact that the game generally doesn't force you to quick change uh, between lots of items or spells in a short period of time, even towards the end helps a lot. The control scheme itself utilises the GameCube controls cleverly and feels natural and smooth and the main story arc is both engaging and interesting. Unfortunately, the main story is peppered with conveniences for either plot or mechanical reasons and weird plot beats that don't gel well with the story. For example, when Fox needs to be introduced to the Krizoa collection mechanic, instead of the game telling you that it's important to your main quest, it makes it feel like a side mission and gives Fox a really shitty motivation. Oh, I suppose I should probably save her, then, oh wait, she's hot, I've really got to save her now. I think that's my main takeaway from this playthrough of the game. Fox is actually a bit of a dick, he never seems particularly happy to help, has money as his main goal, is sarcastic and rude, and only seems to want to save the girl once, he's re once he realises she's actually hot. A story game with an unrelatable protagonist is fighting a losing battle, especially when none of the characters are developed very much at all. The, the less than stellar voice acting and editing of the voice lines also doesn't help on this point and goes a very uh, long way to nearly ruining the, the immersive and amazing world. Where the game really falls down though is the obvious parts where the Star Fox intellectual property is, ca um, is wrenched in to the original Dinosaur Planet concept. It's quite jarring at the beginning when Crystal is captured and suddenly Fox is com commandeered, but at the end it's downright awful with a build up to an amazing boss fight, a full boss room and setup, just for it to be snatched away at the last moment and replaced by a plot twist and boss battle that doesn't fit in with the theme or atmosphere of the game and ultimately leaves, leaves a bitter taste in the mouth of every player who likes Star Fox Adventures enough to get to this point. Ultimately, I think... Ah, oh, this music so bad. Ultimately, I think the reason people have fond memories for this game is because the world is immersive. The graphics, considering it's a GameCube title, are amazing, and the overarching story is clever and makes sense within the world. The puzzles are varied, and if you allow for conveniences, fit well into the world as a whole. There is also a decent effort at world building, and I feel the game takes you to each place a good number of times and spreads this out relatively evenly. However, this is a game that when you are playing, you can really feel the development hell that went on in the background. While the decision to slap the Star Fox IP onto the game definitely meant that the game sold more copies, it made for a game that is both thematically confused and annoyed a lot of Star Fox fans by not really being a Star Fox game. It's a great game for nostalgia, but if you've never played it before, I'm unlikely to recommend playing it unless you are a massive Zelda fan like me and appreciate the linear but immersive story and mostly believable world of Dinosaur Planet provided but, um, by the most confused story I have ever enjoyed, Star Fox Adventures.